Okay, on to topic number two, uh, the shit show that was the debates. Um, so, up top, I'll be very honest, I did not watch the whole thing. I watched about an hour, and that's all I could handle. I'm sorry. I watched a few uh, additional clips here and there, and um, sorry I couldn't watch the whole thing. It was a fucking nightmare. Uh, from the get go, it was a fucking nightmare. Like Chris Wallace, just I mean, he had no control over anything, over fucking anything, no control, no fucking control. It was just, it was just a fucking wild west for an like. Holy shit. Holy shit. Let's go over some of the highlights, right? They start with the Supreme Court because why not? And and Biden makes this fucking statement where he goes, uh, oh, well, you know, uh, the, the people are voting for the Supreme Court. It's on the ballot because uh, the way you way the people choose the Supreme Court is by picking their president and vice president, ca- presidential candidate and congressional candidates so that <clears throat> you know, they they can make a choice about who gets to be on the Supreme Court. And it's just like, that's not... No. How about you, we vote them in? That's going to make people more involved in politics. Oh, shit. A real democracy. Where people's voice actually matters. And it's not just corporate control all the time. Look, if you think Biden's fucking Supreme Court pick would have been different or better than Trump's, you might have gotten some Roe v. Wade leniency, maybe, but, you know, overall, when it comes to making big decisions, they just don't. I just did a whole show about the Supreme Court. Uh, the video will be released in a few weeks, but this is, they don't. They have way too much power. They need to be. They need to be reined in. And the, one of the biggest ways they can be reined in is by fucking having us vote for them. So this spirals out. Things get fucking nuts. And Trump starts talking about how the Democratic Party uh, wants to get socialist with health care. They they want to do the socialist health care plan, and Trump. <laughs> starts talking about, you know, oh, but that's what the, the party's leaning towards socialism. They're leaning towards socialism. First of all, this is false. They're not, the Democratic Party is not leaning towards socialism. Uh, as a socialist, I can tell you that they're fucking not. And they straight up came out and said that they will never support Medicare for all. And Biden himself has come out and said that he will veto Medicare for all because he wants the ACA and the ACA is hooked into fucking private insurance companies and, and uh, Big Pharma, so why would he lose that? They, they endorse him. They fucking put money into, into his coffers. They fucking bailed him out. Why would he, why would he put, take away the ACA? Like, there's so much pride. He's like, Obama, ACA, haha, <laughs> that's me. Remember Obama? You can go back to sleep if you got old Sleepy Joe. So that's a straight up lie from Trump. And then you get the great fucking Biden. I mean, this is like first five minutes, right? Where Biden just goes, I am the Democratic Party. Oh, geez. The fucking ego on this guy. He is the Democratic Party. Oh, boy. You're not the Democratic Party. You you are a mascot at best. Not a good mascot either, because your cognitive uh, functions are are failing. Within 10 minutes, Chris Wallace has lost control, and now it's Chris Wallace debating Trump. And then Trump calls it out, too. Like, he straight up fucking calls it out. The sheer insanity of it all. Within, I mean, within 10 minutes, I was just like, what is, what's, what the fuck is happening? This is devolving so fucking quickly. And then they start insulting Bernie. Start insulting Bernie Sanders, who's not even there. He's probably at home fucking watching this on his TV. 
He drops Pocahontas. Trump drops the Pocahontas reference. Talking about Elizabeth Warren. And it's just like, what the fuck are we doing? These people aren't even... Like, they're not even here. Oh, my God. What a night... It was such a living nightmare. Then they start taking low blows at each other. You know, Trump keeps talking about 47 years in office. You've done anything significant. Uh... Biden goes over and he's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, You're a buffoon. You're a clown. And the thing with Trump is, look, in reality, he had no answers for a lot of the questions. So he went to bait Biden and Biden took the fucking bait. And I saw earlier today that PolitiFact confirmed that he wasn't, you know, wearing a thing in his ear to, to tell him in what direction to go. And I read that and I was like, well, maybe he fucking should have. Maybe he should have had a little guy in his ear to be like, hey, he's baiting you. He's baiting you. You should not take the bait. You should not take the fucking bait. You should chill out. Hey, man, he seems to be baiting you. You should fucking chill out. He didn't. So. Uh... Then that, the, well, yeah, the the one interaction that it ended with is uh, you don't know what you're talking about. And uh, folks, do you guys even know what this clown is doing? That's a Biden quote. I mean, he goaded him right into the into the thing and he knew that he was going to look at the way that Biden has talked about Trump in the past. Right. Like Biden wants to fight Trump. He said that if he was in high school, he would beat the shit out of him. So they took that, they, and then they took his 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 failing uh, cognitive abilities. They took the fact that he's going to get flustered very quickly, and I mean they ran with it. Not one policy question was legitimately answered. And then eventually we got to uh, the Supreme Court packing, right? Like uh, Biden was asked whether he was going to pack the courts. And then he does this political. I'm the politician, so I will uh, look. Come on, man. Look, here's the thing. Look, here's what we're going to do. And he never answers the question whether he's going to pack the courts or not. And and so Trump just kept asking, are you going to pack the courts? Are you going to pack the courts? Are you going to pack the courts? And... So that's when Biden goes, hey, will you shut up? And fair, but it's also, that's the moderator's job to do. Chris Wallace needs to fucking do that. But they don't. And they did that with the Democratic debates, too. Where they would let the fucking candidates bicker amongst each other. And fight amongst each other. But that's good, that sells soap. That's good for the network. That's good for the ratings. So fuck all. Who gives a shit? I mean, it was just obnoxious. They both interrupted each other throughout every step, every turn. Trump would say something and Biden would interrupt and Biden would say something and Trump would interrupt. And Chris Wallace at one point was just like, guys, you got to, can we just please, I got, no, I'm just, please, I just, please, somebody listen to me. I am an important person. I am on the television. Yeah, uh, and then Trump points out 47 years in office and you've accomplished nothing. And and then there's all this hypocrisy in the way that Biden wants to handle the pandemic, right? Early responses, we got to put, um, you know, uh, the economy has to come second and this, that and all that. And it's just like, yeah, if the economy comes second, then approve Medicare for all. We're in a global pandemic, then say that you'll approve Medicare for all. He's like, oh, that's going to put $10 million, put us $10 million in the hole. Yeah, because you don't understand how math works. 
it's going to save us money. We're spending 50, uh, I think it's 50 billion or something like that. And then you're like, well, the insurance companies, if we're spending that much, and then we add Medicare for all on top. No, it's, no, no, no. We're not adding Medicare for all on top of it. We're switching to Medicare for all because it would save us like $20 billion. He wants to handle this fucking pandemic properly, yet he doesn't want to do what it's going to take to handle this pandemic properly is really what it boils down to. That's really what it all comes down to. So you have this big, you know, his hypocrisies are being shown in the way he says he wants to handle the pandemic and then uh, all the things that would help him handle the pandemic the way that he wants to handle it, he won't do it because, what well, he beat the socialists and the ideas are all socialist. But we need, we're a capitalist country and we need to think about the economy, but we also have to think about the safety of people. Well, those things don't go hand in hand. Either you're going to fucking think about the economy or you're going to think about people's safety. Pick one. That's, you, you know, that's... Oh, yeah, and Trump, don't say smart around me, you're dumb. What the fuck? What kind of playground bullshit is this? He turned into a fucking playground bully. You can't say smart. And then Trump has the fucking gall to bring up how opening the states is necessary because it's going to affect the mental health of people. No, watching this debate is affecting the mental health of people. That's wrecking the mental health of, of, of Americans all across this country. It's to watch this fucking sham happen in front of us. It says it's not fair. It's like being in prison. It's like, I don't know. Have you seen prisons? Do you Are you aware of what prisons actually are and what they look like? Because this ain't it, friend. Then Trump calls out Biden, uh, you know, because they start going after Trump's taxes and he calls out Biden about how he's the one that wrote the tax codes and, uh, you know, that helped all these rich people get uh, loopholed out and get all of these, you know, benefits because that's what he did with the tax code. And that was an Obama Obama law. And Obama helped him get rich and not pay taxes. And, you know, Biden stumbled and struggled because he can't answer that question without lying, essentially, and getting caught lying. And and look, that's what they're going to do with with the um, with the issue of Trump's taxes. Right. Is. What they'll do is they will make it a issue about Trump and not an issue about how the rich are are controlling legislation. They they bought out our politicians. Citizens United has allowed corporations to be people. And so then Biden just goes, "You're the worst president this country's ever had." I don't like you. Like, maybe. I don't know. Andrew Jackson was pretty fucking terrible. It's my turn for the presidency, Trump. I want it. It's my turn. Ew. All right, man. Fuck. You're the worst president we've ever had. It's like, fuck, that's your argument. You're in a debate. Hit him with some policies. Hit him with your ideas. But they don't have anything good. So they have to make a good show out of it. And it's which, which, you know, fucking yelly old man did you like less? That's who you're not going to vote for. That's not how an election's supposed to work. Biden was struggling to keep up. Trump keeps baiting him. 
and he keeps taking the bait and he gets all and he starts stumbling around right and I look and then Chris Wallace can't fucking control either of them and I feel like that's sort of the way like it's a it's a perfect al- uh, metaphor for American politics because you know you you have the private businessman and he's basically running the show because he's got the politician on the ropes and he's calling out the politician about his corruption and shit and the politician can't do anything about it and the media is just like we'd like a little bit of uh, some kind of niceness happening here I'm, I'm in charge I'm somebody very in charge and both the politician and the private business owner are like shut the fuck up and keep the cameras pointed on us and make us look pretty you puppet fucking dance dance puppet and that and it's like that's exactly how this system is run you have the media that just kind of lets the show go on the private business is kind of dragging along the politicians and the politicians are complaining but they'll just kind of cave in and give in to private business interest anyway They'll bend the knee for the private interest industries. That's what they do. That's what they've always done. That's what they'll continue doing. Oh, this was a gem. Then Biden comes out and says uh, that he is done, the the only president that might have done more for the black community than Joe Biden was Abraham Lincoln. Which is a lie. And also very Republican of him to compare. It's like, I'm the, I, I am the party of Lincoln. I am the entire, entire party of Lincoln. I am Abraham Lincoln. Just like, ooh, Joe, I think your dementia is totally set in. Also your delusions of grandeur, too. I have a stove top pipe hat. Very tall. Very tall hat. Joe Biden wrote one of the worst fucking crime builds of all time. He advocated for the three strike rule, uh, implemented a, a, a war on drugs, and has put more black people in prison. Uh, also, he said if you don't vote for him, you're not black. And then he dismissed it by saying locker room talk. And. Uh, and we're, and we're all supposed to just be like, oh, okay, well, he's a Democrat, so I guess they're allowed to say that. I have a black friend, Barack Obama, so I'm allowed to say who, who is and isn't black. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can say you've done more for the black community. Uh, that's a sociopathic thing to say. Oh, here's another gem dealing with race in the debates where Trump basically said that uh, racial sensitivity is bad for America. It's un-American to be racist. And, and you know what? T- t- technically speaking, he's right because this country was still founded on slavery. It was still founded on racial tensions. It took a really long time for black people to be counted as people. Racism is part of America's history, and this guy is just like, it's it's kind of not. It's because white people are pretty cool. And then I saw the fucking Proud Boys segment where, I mean, and at this point, it's like Trump was getting flustered, and instead of saying stand down, he just told him to stand by. And it totally seemed like an old man move, but fucking holy shitballs. What a terrible gaffe that was telling domestic terrorists to stand by. This is what happens when you you have a capitalist system that values entertainment more than discourse. And that's exactly what this is. This is all entertainment. None of this was real. There's no policy discussed. There were no ideas put on the table. And some people uh, I, I've seen on social media telling me that, oh, well, this is... Well, now they're going to vote for Biden. And it's like, really? After all of that? Because that was a sham. This is not what the American people deserve. This is not what the voting system deserves. It was a 
fucking shit show. It's a clown car with two people. It's not even it's not even that funny when you think about it. They're like, "Oh my god, a clown car. It'll be this will be exciting." And then two very small people come out of the car and they're like, "Ah, pretty funny. Two small people in a small car." And they're like, "I don't think you get it. I don't think you get how jokes work. I don't think you get how any of this works." Please go away. And they're like, no, we're going to be here. and We're going to stay louder. This is what happens when you value entertainment over discourse and, and critical thinking. But that's what it is. It's entertainment. People aren't looking for ideas anymore. They're not looking for, for, for candidates with, uh, with thought, with, with, with heart or empathy. They're just looking for who's the, who's the most entertaining person. Who's got the who's got the entertainment values that I have? You know, who shares the same entertainment values that I do? I'll vote for that person. Not who's got the same ideals that I do in general and 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 you know, if if I don't believe that they have the same ideals, can I talk to them? Will they listen to me? Will they understand where they're coming? Can, can they move in the direction of progress? And neither of these candidates are going to move in the direction of progress. Uh, they are going to move in the direction of good ratings. Because the reality is we all fucking watched it. And they're going to do it again twice. And you know what they're going to do? The same fucking shit. This might be the last fucking debates I watch. I don't think I'm going to watch the other two. Very good chance I won't watch the other two. I will be very surprised if I get baited into watching the other two. Uh, and I don't think you guys should either. I don't think anybody should watch the debates. Because this is what they're going to be. They're shams. They are pieces of entertainment. They are not about policy. They're not about politics. They're not about the people. They're about ratings for MSNBC and CNN and whoever else decides to replay them. This entire election is a reality television show. And that is the epitome of what capitalism is. When you run a government on capitalism, or rather when capitalism runs a government, this is kind of what happens. Entertainment takes over real discourse politics becomes entertainment. I'm not saying it can't be entertaining, but it's not entertainment. A political comedian can be part of entertainment and still be informative and engaging and fun. Education can be all of those things. But this is not. This is just... It's reality TV. I don't know if I want to keep participating in it anymore. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure you like it. Please make sure you share it. And please make sure you are subscribed to this channel, whether you're watching this on the YouTubes, whether you're watching this on Facebook or uh, or Rockfin, which is the cryptocurrency blockchain platform. It's ad-free, and make sure that content creators get paid for the content that they want to make. It's completely uncensored. Whether you're on any of these channels, make sure that you are subscribed and following me for uh, all new video updates. There are uh, videos uh, put up on this channel on a weekly basis, anywhere from four to six videos every single week. Uh, they include uh, news commentary. They include sociopolitical com comedy commentary, uh, rants, uh, current event stuff, interviews, stand-up comedy clips, there's a ton of stuff that's available on this channel. Uh, and if you want to come see one of my live virtual stand-up comedy shows called The Citizen Revolution Live Virtual Stand-Up Comedy Show, you can grab tickets directly off my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, while you're there, you can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets to these shows uh, uh, and a bunch of cool other uh, bonus stand-up comedy clips uh, while you're at it. And uh, you, or you can make a one-time donation as well uh, if, if that is something that, that you would like to do, if the sustaining membership is something that you can do. I know we're in tough times right now. Uh, 
Uh, but if you can, that'd be awesome. If not, that's cool too. But the big thing to do is make sure that you are liking it, you are sharing this, and you are subscribed to the channel. Till next time, thank you so much, and we'll see you on the road.